Good afternoon Tuffers. Well today we're just going for one zone, Wallace's Cave. Much Cycles had mentioned it on the uh, messaging thing. So I thought we'll go and visit, make a little video and show everybody what Wallace's Cave looks like. So I'm also trying out the media mod for the GoPro. It's a little sort of enclosure with a directional microphone and wind baffle and it's got mounts for um, a flash or lighting which I've brought with me which we'll need in the cave so to get here you need to go to the road between Rosewell and Roslyn and on the Roslyn side before you start dropping down to the barn to the river there's a little parking area on the corner just about big enough for two cars so if you park there and then you walk along to the right you'll see a sign for Scottish Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve just take the path there and basically follow the main path along downstream or to the east east, east north, northeast even the path's quite distinct at first but it does kind of peter out a little bit so you kind of need to Keep the river on your left. It's well trodden here. I'm going to have to take something out of my shoe if you bear with me. That's better. Serves me right for wearing sandals. Now, this is a footpath best. Cycling and kick scooting are not easy. I've done both, or all three. The bike, you can cycle bits, but there's a lot of portage. There's a deer. Same with the scooter. A lot of lugging it about. It's dry at the moment, but there are some muddy patches with some improvised walkways. I think there's a few fallen trees as well. It's a lovely place, mind. Look at that. Oh, cool. Really nice. A lot of mature trees. Lots of wildlife. Mind you, it's a wee bit hairy <laughs> at the cave. There's some stone cut steps leading down. No handrails, it's very exposed. So you need to be quite brave. Or stupid, depending on your point of view. Now, this is definitely hazard number one. I think there might have been a bridge here at one time, but there certainly isn't any more. There's a little valley. Difficult to get the scale of it there. Like the Grand Canyon pictures. You don't get the full idea. But, uh, we need to cross that. As I say, if you're on a bike, you're probably better leaving your bike at home. 
there are kind of sort of steps where people have trodden, which is fine in the dry, but uh, it can be quite slippy. And the rocks at the bottom in the barn are wet and slippy. So you need to be careful. So lugging my scooter up here on my shoulder, I can just show you. There's the path going into the. I suppose the camera doesn't really show how deep that is. Go and negotiate it fine. Can't really show you how much down there is to down, but uh, there we go. Safely across. Of course, the chasm at Casadum. I think that's what it was called. I was going to say. Uh, like my new haircut, I did that yesterday. I'm experimenting. During lockdown, I bought some clippers. So what I've been doing is number three on the side and back, leaving the top. So I'm going to do it just to see what happens. Not quite sure how long I'll leave it to go. End up with a Mohican. Maybe dye it red. Do some daft oldie stuff. Although I shouldn't really go on about oldies, should I? I'm only 60. Still a young lad. Still another 40 years to go. That's my target, 100. I'm going to, I'm going to pass away while cycling my Pugsley on the beach when I'm 100. That's what I'm aiming for. Here's one of the muddy bits, not too muddy today, somebody's chucked sticks on to help you cross, well, nice and easy today. Here's one of the trees that's down, it's not too bad. Just a bit awkward for a bike. Have to see someone ride their bike across here. Maybe a young guy, Kenny McCaskill, could do it. Certainly not I. Wouldn't even try. I value my bones. And here we are. Approaching. Well, this is cave. Let me see. And it's way down there. This is where we are. And that's us in the zone. So you don't actually need to go down the cave to get the zone. But if you're here, you might as well. And it's down. Down there. So I'm taken. So down we go. Have a quick look over the edge. All the way down. Difficult to see. Here we go. I just need to watch out for the leaf debris on the steps. Should have brought a brush and 
could have cleaned it. Maybe do that one day actually. Actually, this would be a nice night visit place. Steps are well worn here. As you can see, there's nothing to stop you continuing on down. There we are, that's where we're going. Very carefully. Don't want to end up paddling in the river. So these are sandstone cliffs. I think old red sandstone, can't remember which geological age that is. But there's the cave. So into the deeps. So I'm just going to go back a little bit. I'm gonna set up the camera with some light, so back soon. <laughs> so I'm um, I'm not going to stare at the lights because it's too bright. So, in we go. And this is Wallace's cave. There's the entrance. You see the cutting at the side. You can see the tool marks on the wall. It's been chiselled out. Quite solid. Don't know what it was made for, right? I wonder if you could live here. A bit damp. A bit awkward. No what to say. <laughs> it's got running water, mind. Bit echoey, you wouldn't be able to listen to the telly. Oh, look, there's a little spider's web thing. And there's the big spider. I can see that. And that's Wallace's cave. It must be a good 10 metres in, standing up height. There we go. It's a pity it didn't go back hundreds of metres or something. That would be much more fun. How do you fancy spending the night here with the echo of the ghosts? Right, into the daylight again. Carefully. Oh, it's cold in there actually. Now I'm just going to switch these lights off so I can face the camera because they're just too bright. There we go. Did you enjoy that? That was Wallace's cave. It's nice here. You hear the river running below the North Esk. There is actually a path down there. That's an expedition for another day. So, let me just pack up. Actually, what I'll do, I'll take a little photograph of the setup here so I can show you the camera gear. There we go. Okay. Back soon. So back up the, the steps we go. Very carefully, I may add.
the effort must have gone in to cut these until you cut the first one and work down or do you upsell down at the bottom and cut back up? Yeah, the path does continue along to Hawthorne Den, Writer's Retreat, which is kind of private, so I wouldn't go that way. We'll just head back to the way we came. So back to the crossing of the chasm. Nice and easy when it's dry. And that's that. Doesn't take long to get there. Actually, it seemed fairly short. The last time I came, it seemed to take a lot longer to get there. Which is very odd. I'm just heading back to the car now, um, but before we go, I'm going to have a wander about with the camera, see if I can find some nuts and hollows and holes, make some goblins. And I've seen them on Planet Gary. What you do, take a picture of what is likely to be a goblin, but you'll only see half it. And then on the, oh, on the software, you take a section, mirror that, paste it to create a hole and you get some weird and wonderful images. So, until next time, bye for now. Back again. <laughs> I was saying about the goblin photography. Here's an example here. show you on the tree. Now I'll show you the photograph in a little while. But if you take a photograph, take half that, the top right would be the eye, the bottom sort of dark area would be the nostril, or one side of the nostril. And then you mirror that and you get a face. And that's all there is to it. It's good creating something from this, something that's not there. I'd love to be able to paint or draw, but when you see a blank sheet of paper, I'm struggling. But this is fun. It's photography. So give it a go. I've run out of water, so I'm getting a bit of a headache, so I'm back to base. Catch you later. <laughs>